Well, welcome to our uh, seminar. Uh, I'm Jeff Reed, and it is my privilege to uh, introduce Professor Suwon Choi. He is a professor at Henyang University, and he's probably one of the most well-known Korean wireless professors there in, in Korea. Uh, absolutely. he's. Uh, uh, very well known for his hardware work and his his work in standardization activities. Um, you're going to hear today about one of the standardization activities he's in, is involved in, but uh, I have worked with him before with a wireless innovation forum coming up with standardized APIs for smart antennas and and uh, we also share other things in common. He, he started as a professor in 1992, as, as I did as well. Um, uh, and he's become director of the research center, uh, has about 98 students in, in, within that research center. Um, he also has done a lot of patents, well, lots, of, lots and lots of journal papers. Um, uh, but what perhaps makes him a little different than the uh, average, or than, than a US faculty member. Lots of patents, lots of development of, of intellectual property. He has like 50 plus patents, uh, quite amazing. So I am looking forward to hearing your presentation, Professor Troy. Oh, thank you very much. Um, Kind of too much flattered. So <laughs> it's my great pleasure and honor to meet all of you here. And I'd like to thank Jeff once again for this wonderful opportunity of presenting my work that I have been doing in ETSI, ETSI, European Telecommunication Standard Institute, for the last five years. And I hope I can summarize five year work within 40 minutes today. So uh, if you know, I happen to not uh, be able to finish up all the slides today, then, you know, um, I can make my presentation in such a way that even if I stop, you know, uh, before the end of my, all the slides, then you'll be able to, to look at it by yourself and, you know, contact me later through my email. i will be happy to re reply in, uh, for a possible comment or questions. Okay. The title of my talk today is ATSIS RRS Solution for MD Reconfiguration. Uh, RRS stands for Reconfigurable Radio System. And we, uh, in uh, TC RRS of SC, we develop standard architecture of reconfigurable mobile device. And we also developed interfaces related to that standard architecture. Okay, so. Uh, Let's get started. All right. And these are the contents of my talk today. And I was planning to introduce my research center very briefly, but uh, let's do it later because we are kind of short, uh, have, having a short time. So uh, these are the research area performed by myself and uh, my 12 co uh, colleague professors in my research center and my research personally lies on a mostly on a physical layer so i'm developing software modem for multi-mode mobile device by multi-mode mobile device i mean sdl you know uh, mobile device which is reconfigurable and i also develop some prototype um, base station system to check the functionality of the uh, reconfigurable mobile device we developed. And let's take a look at the standardization in SC. And uh, this is what the technical committee of RRS uh, consists of. Okay, it consists of four working groups. So working group one mainly deals with system and infrastructure and is chaired by uh, a gentleman from Nokia Networks. And working group two is chaired by myself. 
and working group two is mainly for reconfigurable radio equipment architectures, of which, of which some part you will take a look at today. And working group three is mainly for uh, cognitive uh, management and control. And working group four is mainly for safety, which is also very important as well as technical uh, methods. Okay. And this slide shows you the procedure of generating a standard you know, in SC. So first we develop use case definitions as a technical report. Then based on that, we develop system requirement, technical spec, and based on that, we develop system architecture, technical specification. And finally, we develop protocol and interface uh, technical specs. And each TS is evolved into a corresponding European standard. Okay. So for the reconfigurable mobile device, we have developed. Uh, we have been developing uh, system requirement document and evolved as a uh, European standard already. And architecture was developed and evolved as a European standard as well as of 2015 June and. We decided to develop four different kinds of interfaces related with the standard architecture. And we have finished developing the first three kinds of interfaces. And the final interface, which is a programming interface, is being finalized uh, now. And that will be finished, hopefully, by the end of next February. Okay. Then uh, we'll finish developing all the standard related to the reconfigurable mobile device. Will this get incorporated into 3GPP? Uh, we are not uh, really connected with 3GPP officially, but uh, we, we you know, exchange you know, the result of our development with each other. And these are the documents that we have published. We have published the clinical record and technical specifications for system requirement and system architecture and three interfaces. We uh, haven't yet finished up the uh, programming interface. Then requirement architecture and interfaces having evolved into a corresponding European uh, standard. So uh, is Virginia Tech a member of SC? Yeah. Uh, if you are, then you can take a look at all the documents. But even if you are not, you know, uh, you can get it if, because you are a very close friend of mine. So. <laughs> okay. And if you are a very close friend of him, then you can get it too. <laughs> so that's how it works. Is there any incorporation of Google's modular radio into oh, this? No, actually no. not. So, yeah, so please. Uh, yeah, th that's very good uh, comment. All right. Now, why do we have to standardize the reconfigurable radio system? See, what we want is as follows. Um, I have software modem code. If I send it to all of you, then I want all the platform to be configured with this software modem code. But the problem is your platform are all different from each other. Okay? So the thing is software and hardware is stuck to each other. So software has to be developed differently to each of different you know hardware platform. So we want to make a standard architecture for the software and hardware, and want to develop a standard interface corresponding to that standard you know, architecture. So if software is made up with the standard programming interface, and hardware is compliant with the standard programming interface, then software guys and hardware guys don't have to meet with each other. They can develop independent software and hardware. So once your platform is compliant with our standard, then if I test 
my software modern code, then it then it report it onto your uh, platform. No problem. So if that happens, then your reconfigurable mobile device can be reconfigured with any desired modern code which is available in the radio app store. So you can have your LT code downloaded from the radio app store, or you can have any desired radio application store from the radio <coughs> app store. Once your platform is compliant with our standard architecture and standard program interface, and that software modern code has been made up with the standard programming interface. Okay? But you now at this moment you have some question. What about the granularity of the programming interface? What I'm saying is some platform manufacturer may want to make their platform with very coarse grain programming interface. For example, Qualcomm, I don't know. Qualcomm may want to make their platform with very coarse grain programming interface so that their LTE, the whole LTE is one programming interface. Some other platform hardware guys may make their platform as follows. LTE consists of some functional blocks. FFT, interleaver, what else? The, 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 the turbo decoder and so on. Then Samsung guys may make their platform LTE with you know multiple number of fine grain functional block. Well as Qualcomm guys, LTE is for one thing, LTE functional block. Right? So we still have to we still have to resolve the problem of granularity, even with this idea. So at the end of at the later part of my presentation today, I'll be introducing the concept of radio virtual machine, which can resolve the different granularity at each platform. Okay. So using that, you don't have to use so-called SCA. Okay, SCA. We don't believe SCA is practical and uh, useful for commercial use. Okay. Now. So would this change business models? For instance, I could buy a generic phone at Best Buy, and I select the code at the App Store of the best modem. So would it would it enable that kind of a business model where you could mix and match? That's right. If if your if your you know cell phone. Adopts a uh, platform which is compliant with our standard. That means your your platform is capable of executing all the standard functional blocks defined as a standard programming interface in our opinion. Then, then you can have any desired radio application downloaded and ported and executed on your platform on your mobile device. So this would create a competitive market then, and ah. the software that... Yeah, yeah, that's a very important question. The question, another question is, why does my uh, cell phone have to be reconfigured? I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, so, so I think we can answer the question you know, okay. uh, in this section. Now, Mobile device can be classified into many groups according to reconfiguration capabilities. Okay? So class zero, no reconfiguration capability. Class one, as you go below, the reconfiguration capabilities, you know, decreased. Now, let's take a look at a little more detail about that. Class 0 is equipped with a fixed hardware modem chip. So software download is not allowed. And class number 1 equipped with multiple number of fixed modem chip. Say the first one is for what WCDMA, the second one is you know LTE, 
Maybe the third one is for Wi-Fi and so on. Still, it does not allow the software uh, download. <coughs> okay. Now, from this class and below, two by and below, well, the, the, modern, uh, the mobile device allows software download. Okay? But this class 2, 3, and 4, we use executable code. We download the executable code. And 5, 6, and 7, we download platform independent source code or platform independent intermediate representation. So, these guys, this uh, mobile device we can receive only executable code. That means I have to provide modern code or differently depending on the platform, okay? Because it's executable code. But these guys receive modern code in the form of platform independent source code or platform independent intermediate representation. By intermediate representation, I mean the result of front end compilation. Okay? You make modern code with you know C or C plus plus whatever, that source code, then you use front end compiler, then the result of front end compilation is intermediate representation. This is not yet executable code. But this is platform independent code. Okay? Then, having that in your mind, class 2 and 5 is equipped with programmable modem chip. And so that you can have the desired radio application code downloaded. If you want a new additional radio application code, then you have to change the entire modem code from the beginning, so that uh, having that desired new one in it. Okay. So this is how the class two and five works, and class three and six. Now this one is also based on programmable modem chip, and you can have desired radio application codes downloaded from the radio app store. And if you want a new radio application, then you can have it. Download it only when the computational resources allows the new additional one. Okay, so you have to consider the worst case uh, resource consumption, a so called static resource sharing. But class four and seven, you configure the mobile device with desired radio application code. If you want a new one, new radio application code, add it on that, then check the available resources. If resource is not enough, then if it was class three and six, then that would be denied. But in this case, since we are talking about dynamic resource sharing, you can change the operating mode of currently running radio application code reduce it and have the new one downloaded okay so this is based on dynamic uh, resource sharing so static resource sharing and dynamic resource sharing is related with static linking and dynamic linking respectively and we'll see a little more details about static linking and dynamic linking later part of this presentation so going back to the Jeff's answer I mean uh, question uh, can this kind of mobile device compete with the currently we are talking to our hand, our mobile phone is based on the class one so mobile phone with many you know multiple fixed uh, hardware modern chips right it will depend on you know many factors so uh, mostly the semiconductor technologies and power consumption things but see here's one thing that i have never considered myself now i try to i try to apply this whole thing to commercial smartphone but 
as you know, it didn't work well, very well, right? So far. Now, what if we apply this idea to the modern, modern module for vehicular communication? Once you sell a car, you have to guarantee all the functionality of the car for at least 10 years. But for 10 years, the communication standard will definitely be changed. So, for example, in Korea, Hyundai car you know, sold some model with modem chip in it, which was capable of CDMA. But CDMA was gone you know, immediately after they sold the car. So they had to you know, repay a lot of money for you know, those customers who you know, bought that model. So the modem chip for car communication should definitely be reconfigured. But so far, you know, the competitiveness for uh, smartphone is not, unfortunately, it's not very clear. So we'll, we'll, we'll I'll come back to that problem later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, there's more, though, to an automobile than just the, the communications, and particularly some of the newer ones. Um, some of the safety equipment, um, especially. So, could you upgrade? Well, could you use this framework, let's say, to upgrade individual electronic components within the car? Does it have to be limited to a radio platform? Could it be for the backup camera signal processing for uh, oh, my car, my new car? I get a 360 degree view of everything around me when I start to park. Uh, really some clever signal processing, but I can see where it could be even more clever. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good point, I think. Okay, so uh, we are now ready to introduce the standard architecture of the recomputable mobile device. Okay, this slide shows you the standard architecture. On the bottom, you have physical layer, which I say radio platform. And we have unified radio application component here, which is the thing that you have downloaded from the radio app store. So once the radio application code is downloaded onto your you know, uh, mobile device, which we call radio system, I mean radio computer, okay? It's called Unified radio application because once it's downloaded onto your mobile <coughs> device, no matter whether it was LTE or CDMA or WCDMA, it's nothing but a software to be executed on a computer. So that's why we call it unified radio application once it's downloaded on your mobile device. And we have a part of real time operating system, which I call radio control framework. This radio control framework shall provide five functionalities as shown here. Let me introduce this one first before I go to radio control framework. We have another component which I call communication services layer, which provides four functionalities. For example, administrator generates a command, um, command to install or uninstall the desired or undesired radio application code. So that command is sent to configuration manager, and that command is executed by this guy. Okay? That command is transmitted from administrator to uh, configuration manager to the interface, which we call GUI. Okay? Another functionality of communication services layer is done by mobility policy manager, NPM. NPM generate a command of activating or deactivating the desired or undesired radio application code respectively. And that command is sent to radio connection manager and executed by this guy on real-time uh, operating system. Okay? And similarly, we have a uh, networking step for receiving and transmitting user data and monitor to process the context information generated during the process of executing radio application code. Okay? So we have, anyway, a communication services layer. 
which does not have to operate on real-time basis. So we believe communication services layer should be on, on non-real-time non operating system. And here, this is once again a part of real-time operating system, radio control framework, which provides five functionalities for installing or uninstalling the radio application code or for activating or deactivating radio application or for data you know, transfer, sending and receiving the user data or control the spectral resources. See, we are talking about many radio applications. LTE, WCDMA, each of which uses, might use different spec, you know, spectrum resources. So you have to control the spectral resources, which is provided by MRC on uh, radio control framework. Also, you have to control and schedule the uh, computational resources on real-time basis. Okay? So these are the uh, uh, standard architecture of the radio computer. And this slide shows you a uh, reference model of uh, standard architecture. Okay, here we have Python, and here we have real-time operating system, and radio control framework is a part of real-time operating system. Some functionality of radio control framework, which I introduced in the previous slide, could be done on non-real-time basis also. So, from here to below is real-time domain, from here to upper is non-real-time domain. And RA1, RA2, RA3 is just radio application code you have downloaded. This is CDMA, WCDMA, you know, LTE, Wi-Fi, and so on. So RA is a software which imposes particular radio platform to generate the transmitter data or to actually the communication uh, purposes. And we have another part in, in radio application code which we call radio controller. Radio controller is to process the context information. You generate many useful context information when you execute the radio application code. For example, RSSI of the received signal, you know, many useful uh, information. And that part is processed by radio controller. Okay, and uh, radio OS is the naming of real-time operating system. And once again, radio control framework is a part of radio OS, providing five functionalities introduced in the previous slide. Okay, and I already introduced the uh, communication services layer. And from here and up, it's not our territory. It's the territory of Android and iOS. And that's not included in our standardization. Okay. Now we call recomputable mobile device radio computer. It's just a computer which executes the downloaded radio application code. Okay. We think of two different cases. Number one, Radio library and backend compiler are included within the radio computer, within your mobile device. Okay, let's go from the beginning. Software guys pro provide radio app source code and is front end compiled and becomes complete code, configuration code. Okay? When you perform front end compilation, you refer to radio library, which includes Normative description of all the standard functional blocks. Normative description of FFT. If FFT has been defined as a standard functional block, normative description of all the you know, standard functional blocks is provided from this radio library. And referring to that, you perform front end compilation of the source code. Then, together with the radio controller and a computer code, it forms radio app package. So radio application package is uploaded on App Store, radio app store, and downloaded into your radio computer and backend compiled. 
using another radio library. This radio library contains native implementation of all the standard functional block. Native implementation of all the standard functional block in accordance with the given platform. So, so you know this configuration code is platform independent. So this configuration code, configuration code of LT is passed to all of you. And your platform can take care of FFT with a dedicated hardware. And your platform does not have that dedicated hardware. Then that will be taken care by you know uh, radio virtual machine. Okay? So when I when I cast the LT code, it contains FFT as a function block. This platform is capable of running it using the uh, corresponding hardware accelerator. But his platform does not have that hardware accelerator. Then that functional block, FFT, has to be partitioned into more fine grained functional you know, blocks. And that thing is provided by, that action is provided by radio virtual machine. So this is why we don't have to think of SCA architecture at all. Okay? I will see a little more detail about radio virtual machine later. Hopefully, if time allows. Now, case number two, backend compilation is performed in a cloud instead of inside your mobile device. Okay? You perform front-end compilation to get config codes, and you form radio app package, radio application package, and upload it, have it available to everybody. Then you download the radio application code onto the cloud. Then in the cloud, you perform backend compilation because backend compiler requires a lot of, you know, uh, power consumption and you know computations. So instead of doing that inside your mobile device, you can have it done in the cloud. Then executable code, radio app executable code is lined up in accordance with your platform through radio virtual machine. So, you know, according to the uh, granularity of your platform and executed. Okay, this is how you uh, form the radio application package. So software guys will make LT code, the OCDMA code in the form of platform specific executable code or sorry, platform independent source code or platform independent intermediate representation, which I just called config codes. So we put emphasis on this case because it's quite straightforward to implement these two cases. Okay? Actually if it's executable code you have to make the software modern code in the form of executable code all differently to all the different platforms, right? We don't want that. Now, platform independent config code, intermediate representation, is the thing that we want to consider very seriously. Okay, anyway, unified radio application config code is provided. Then you add metadata on that, and radio controller should also be added to form radio application packages. The purpose of metadata, metadata tells you which functional block should be executed first, and which one next, which one, and so this one, metadata tells you the order of executing all the functional blocks you know, in a correct order. Okay? So this thing is uploaded in Radio App Store. Okay? Now, we see, we want to see just a little more detail about distributing the radio app package and installing the radio app package on your mobile device when it's given in platform dependent executable code. So the source code is compiled all differently, has to be compiled all di differently depending upon the target platform. Then the executable uh, radio application code is downloaded and executed. It's quite straightforward. It's already executable code. Now it's the case of 
perform independent source code. Radio App Store provides the modern code, radio application code, in the form of source code. So what you have downloaded is source code. So you must have compiler in your mobile device, or you could have compiler in the cloud, as I said previously. Anyway, you have to compile it and generate the executable code and have it executed on your platform. Here, if you adopt the static linking, then radio library should be record when you compile the source code. If it's dynamic linking, then radio library. Radio library is contains native implementation of all the standard functional block. Okay? And that has to be referred during the runtime on real-time basis. So for when you adopt static linking, the resource sharing should be done you know, st statically, static resource sharing. Now, for dynamic linking, you are you are applying you are you are employing what the uh, uh, dynamic linking. I mean, uh, dynamic resource sharing, okay, which was mentioned previously when I talked about the class of mobile device, okay. So for dynamic resource sharing, linking must be dynamic, okay, and vice versa. Okay, this case, this case. Radio App Store gives the result of front and compilation. So Radio App Store, what you have downloaded on your mobile device is config code, the result of front end compilation. Then you have to perform back end compilation on your mobile device. Once again, it could be done in the cloud. And you can adopt Static linking, dynamic linking, for static resource sharing, and dynamic resource sharing is repeatedly. Now, this tells you, when do I have to stop? Now, five minutes ago. <laughs> within, within five minutes, okay. All right, all right. Sorry, guys, uh, for holding you for a long time. This is exciting to me, so I hope this is exciting to you too. So, all right. All right, I try to excite you as much as possible. All right, this is a slide shows you operational structure of unified radio application. If, if what you have downloaded is executable code, then it's quite simple. All the standard functional block and user-defined functional block, which is contained in a radio application that you have downloaded. For example, if you have downloaded LTE code, LTE or WCDMA, any, any waveform should consist of some functional block. Okay? And some of them are standard functional block, and some of them has not been defined as standard functional block, then we call it user-defined functional block. FFT, interleaver, turbo decoder, where power decoder has not been defined as standard functional block, then it's user defined functional block. Okay? So any waveform consists of a you know, bunch of functional blocks. And they are all bound as a one piece in the case of executable code. That's straightforward to be executed on your mobile device. If it's source code or intermediate representation, this is what it looks like. LTE may contain functional block number one, and user-defined functional block, another standard functional block, and so on. If we standard functional block, then your code does not have to contain the main body of this functional block, because this standard functional block is given inside your mobile device as a native implementation of all the standard functional block is available inside your mobile device. It's like standard functional block pool. Okay? So you just call the standard functional block. But for the user-defined functional block, your mobile device does not know what this is. So software guys, when he makes the code of this LT or WCDM or whatever it might be, must explain what this is. Okay? 
And this thing will have to be compiled in the virtual machine accordingly, according to the platform, you know, situation, granularity of the platform, and executed. Okay. Now, the last topic, standard interfaces. We define four kinds of interfaces as SC standard. Number one, standard between, I mean, interface between CSL, Communication Services Layer, and RCL. It's called multi radio interface. The command generated by these guys should be transferred to the corresponding entity inside RCL through this interface. And we define another standard interface between RCF and Unified Radio Application, which is referred to as URI. An interface between URA and R transceiver is called Recomputable R interface, RR5. And finally, and these three guys have already been fixed as European standard. It's finished. And finally, we are making this standard interface, radio programming interface. It's like APE, which you know very well. Okay. Standard programming interface. Each of standard, each of our programming interface represents the corresponding functional block, like FFT, turbo decoder, MIMO, all the functional blocks required for implementing the radio application. So uh, we are almost finalizing this uh, interface. We'll be finished up by the end of next February. So uh, the last part is a little more details about each of four interfaces. So I think you can take a look at uh, you know, uh, the later part uh, by yourself you know, later. So I'd be happy to uh, reply your comment or question or whatever.